at the Department of Fish and Wildlife, we manage uh, wildlife to have abundant wildlife resources, but on the other side, we also have to minimize human conflict, and that's, that's a difficult job in itself. I mean, you think about deer and elk and the amount of crop damage that they do. Um, cougars can also cause some problems with people, with goats, sheep, and chicken. We have found through this research that we've discussed, we know what the growth rate is, and so the next step is what is the harvest rate? And so we're one of the first agencies to think about cougar social stability and territoriality and keeping older age animals on the landscape. And those are kind of the, the basis for our hunting structure. Um, like almost all agencies, agencies in the entire West, uh, we have a harvest guideline system and we have a mandatory sealing requirement, which means that anyone who kills a cougar has to call the Department of Fish and Wildlife, make contact with them, and then we will go out and seal that animal for them. We'll put, actually put a tag on it. But the second step is we collect a lot of data, which goes into our management. So where did you kill it? What, is, what sex is it? How big was it? Um, which zone did it happen in? We manage cougars for a stable age structure for older aged animals on the landscape. So ultimately on the ground, that means we're gonna harvest between 12 and 16%. And um, that's all based on the rate of growth. So we apply that harvest rate to each of our population management units and regional district staff um, all have a window that they can operate in between 12 and 16%. It's kind of a sliding scale. But in other areas where you feel like the population's strong and there's a lot of opportunity, you can go all the way towards the 16% end of things. So we try to stay in between that 12 and 16% um, so the populations don't decline. Um, a lot of people think, um, you know, if you go in and harvest a little bit heavier, um, they can sustain that and they probably could, but then you risk the, the chance of a lot of younger animals being on the landscape. That reduces the quality of people's hunts. That has other effects that we're still looking at that we're, we think may be uh, negatively affecting interactions with people. Um, territorial animals know where they live, they know their country, and, and there's a lot of benefits to this structure. Like I said earlier, it distributes harvest across the landscape. Um, there's folks that don't support hunting, and that's okay. I mean, but it addresses their concerns about, you know, treating cougars with respect, making them part of the ecosystem, and performing the role that they perform. And so all of our stakeholder groups have, have a say in what we do. And the great thing about it, it's very simple and easy to understand. Good for us because we can implement it that way, and good for the public because they can understand it easily.